Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here to discuss this topic of plant physio uh, in plant water relation that is a scent of sap. So how this sap moves from the roots to the tip of the plant uh, and what are the various theories of a scent of sap. Mainly there are three theories of a scent of sap that is root pressure theory, vital force theories and physical force theories. So I will try to discuss these theories in detail in this presentation. Let's dive in. So firstly, what is ascent of sap? It is simply the upward movement of sap, water plus minerals from roots to the tip of the plant is known as ascent of sap. So this upward movement of water along with minerals from roots to the tip of the plant is known as ascent of sap. So the upward transport of water along with dissolved minerals from roots to the aerial parts of the plant is called ascent of sap or translocation of water. So these are the terms that are used for this phenomenon. It occurs through the parts of xylem, that is a complex permanent tissue, mainly choice tissues involved within that is tracheids and vessels of xylem. Uh, this uh, ascent of sap uh, can be demonstrated through uh, experiment in which we use a twig of balsam plant. A balsam plant is called muscarthy ski twig ko ski branch ko and we put this twig in 2% solution of eosin dye for 2 hours and we can observe that there is upward movement of this dye to the aerial parts or jo veinlets hain leaves ki veins hain they become they uh, contain this dye so we can observe the pink color of these veins in this in these veins of leaf so a change change in color of veins and leaves can be visibly seen so this color can be observed in the petals also if their color is whitish so this is how this translocation of sap occurs in upward direction for, to the tips of the plant next this upward movement occurs against the force of gravity so ye jo movement hoti hai water or minerals ki ye gravity ke against upward movement hoti hai so the water or sap is translocated from the root tips to the shoot tips against the force of gravity and it is translocated to a height of 100 meters in some gymnosperms so 100 meters the cave trees may jo upward um, direction mein movement hoti hai water ki and that occurs against the force of gravity so the rate of translocation is approximately 25 to 75 centimeters per minute so this is a very quick process depending upon the species and the prevailing environmental condition so ye jo movement hota hai water ka upward direction mein ये वेरी करता है प्लांट स्पीशीज टू स्पीशीज एंड एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशंस के ऊपर भी सो सेवरल थियरीज हैज बीन पुट अप फॉरवर्ड हैव बीन पुट फॉरवर्ड और पुट फोर्थ टू एक्सप्लेन द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एसेंट ऑफ सैप व्हिच आर गिवन बिलो सो मेनली दीस थियरीज आर वी हैव डिवाइडेड दीस थियरीज इनटू थ्री पोर्शंस फर्स्ट वन इज रूट प्रेशर थ्योरी एंड दिस थ्योरी वाज गिवन बाय जोसेफ प्रिस्ली the second theory is vital force theory which considers that this water movement in the upward direction occurs through living cells so it contains theories like we have this uh, relay pump theory by god levski then pulsation theory by jc bose and one is westermeyer hypothesis which says that the water movement occurs through the xylem parenchyma The next we have third type of theory that is physical force theories so uh, there are different theories like we have capillary theory that is by bohem then we are imbibition theory by unger cohesion tension theory by dixon and jolly which is the most accepted theory so i will try to discuss these theories in detail one by one firstly we have root pressure theory this theory was uh, given by joseph priestley in 1916 and uh, he observed that if a well-watered plant is cut slightly above the ground level, sap starts exuding from the cut end. If we have a plant which is well watering, if we have a plant which is well watering, if we have a plant which is well watering, then the fluid will ooze out. Hoga. And this is called exudation or bleeding. This is called exudation or bleeding. So the root pressure is a hydrostatic pressure that develops due to water accumulation by the root cells. तो जब पानी रूट्स के सेल्स के अंदर जाता है तो उसके अंदर एक प्रेशर क्रिएट होता है दैट इज कॉल्ड हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर एंड दैट हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर इज नोन एज रूट प्रेशर एंड दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस एक्सिलेशन एंड ब्लीडिंग 
So more root pressure is observed during rainy seasons in the tropical regions. Tropical regions in rainy season we root pressure observe karte while uh, this phenomenon is very common in spring season in case of temperate region. Temperate region mein bhi jo uh, plants hote hain unme root pressure hum observe karte hain highest during spring season. Temperate regions are snow bound areas jahan pe snow fall hota hai mostly. So it is mostly one to two atmosphere in most of the plants with few exceptions like we have five to ten atmospheric as well. And we can demonstrate this root pressure by using this device. So what we will do, we will cut up a plant near to the surface and then we will put this glass tube. In the beginning of experiment, we can observe that this is the water level. But after some time, this water level rises in the this tube. So that shows this upward movement due to absorption of water by the roots. Next, there are some objections of this theory. Firstly, this pressure is not observed in all the plants. This is not universal phenomenon. Uh, and we have seen that uh, this upward direction movement of this sap occurs without roots also. So gymnosperms have no or little root pressure, while the tallest trees belong to this group. So gymnosperms have no root pressure. If it is not, it is very low. And uh, we know that the tallest trees belong to this group. The root pressure is generally absent during summers when the water requirements are high. The water is also reported to arise upward even in the absence of roots. So roots ke bina bhi Japani upward direction move karta hai. The rapidly transpiring plants do not develop any root pressure. Then root pressure generally develops at night when evapotranspiration is low. Jo root pressure hai din ke time transpiration ke time develop hota hai nahi hai. Or it develops hota during night time when the rate of evapotranspiration is low. So these are some objections to this theory. Next theory is vital force theory which says that uh, the upward direction movement of this sap occurs through the living tissue. So ascent of sap takes place because of vital activities undergoing in the living cells. So living cells have some vital activities that move in the upward direction. Move karta hai. And xylem vessels and tracheids are closely associated with the xylem parenchyma and ray parenchyma cells, which are living cells associated with xylem vessels and tracheids. Some of the vital force theories are like we have Westermeyer's hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, water movement takes place through the xylem parenchyma. As we know that these are xylem vessels, or these vessels are in case associated with the cells, which are living cells, which are known as xylem parenchyma cells. So, in case viewpoint, tha, he, up, he thought that this water movement takes place through these living cells that is the cells of xylem parenchyma. So vessels and tracheids mainly served as a reservoir of the water. So the vessels are the work of the reservoir ki tarah, means they act as a storehouse of water in the plants. So this was the Westermeer hypothesis. The next vital force theory is relay pump theory given by Gord Labiskin in 1884. According to this theory, this water movement occurs due to pumping activity of xylem parenchyma and ray cells. We know that the xylem parenchyma that is a living cell which is associated with xylem vessels is present in ray cells. And these cells are mainly thought to be involved in this process of ascent of sap and they are associated with vessels and tracheids. So this is xylem vessel. And with this, these cells and these are the parenchyma cells or this is the upward direction of movement hoti hai. and this movement is due to the osmotic difference in the cells here the osmotic pressure is low here the osmotic pressure is high so the water will move towards upward direction by the process of osmosis uh, so water movement takes place in a staircase manner means uh, just some steps may move karte hai, waise hi pani ki upward direction of movement hoti hai. so uh, in this way this water movement takes place according to this theory so this pumping is facilitated by periodic changes in the osmotic potential of these cells. So the osmotic potential has cells meant your variation or the difference of that. That difference is responsible for this upward uh, direction movement of water. And this uh, theory was supported by Jens and uh, he supported this view of Gordlevsky. The next vital force theory was given by Sir J.C. Bose that is known as pulsation theory which was given in the year 1923. 
According to this theory, the innermost living cortical cells of the roots just outside the endodermis uh, are in a state of rhythmic pulsation means in may which pulsatory moments hoti rehti hain aur wo moments moments hoti hain expanding and contraction ki. Alternately, these pulsations are responsible for pumping of absorbed water into the xylem cells. So these uh, rhythmic moments are responsible for this absorption of water. He devised his own apparatus for uh, to explain this phenomenon. He devised his own apparatus using an electric probe, uh, a galvanometer, an electric circuit, and potted plant. So, ye uh, cheesing use ki gayi thi is experiment mein. Mollish in 1928 supported this theory. So, this was the experimental set of uh, Sir J. C. Bose, this is a potted plant, and this is a needle which was inserted to the innermost layer of cortex and it was connected with this galvanometer through an ele electric circuit. And he observed there were small deflections in this meter and due to these pulsatory moments and he thought that uh, these pulsatory moments are responsible for the upward direction movement of water. So these pulsatory moments in the water are the upward direction movement hoti hai, and these are the uh, basic uh, reasons for absorption of water in plants. But there were objections to the vital force theories. Uh, Strasbourger in 1893 proved that the vital theory is wrong by his uh, experiment. Ascent of sap is independent of the living cell. He observed that the ascent of sap is not living cells involved. Nahi hote he showed that plants continue to transport water even if the living cells are killed by physical treatment. If we kill living cells ko kill karte by some physical treatment, so still the plant is able to absorb the water. So here these theories fail. Then Shell in 1930 and McDougall in 1926 proved that there is no relationship between pulsatory activity and translocation of water. So this is the J.C. Bose theory fail because there is no correlation or relationship between pulsatory activity and water absorption or translocation of water. So this theory failed here. Next comes physical force theories. According to these theories, this water movement takes place through the dead cells of xylem. So, this dead, uh, according to this theory, dead cells of xylem are responsible for ascent of sap in plants. And some theories are given, like we have capillary theory. Uh, this theory was given by Bohem in 1809. According to him, the ascent of sap was due to phenomenon of capillarity in the vessel. So, capillarity is a phenomenon where, in a narrow tube, this water rises in the upward direction. And this upward movement occurs due to the phenomenon of surface tension. The water rises as a result of surface tension in the fine xylem tubes. Water rises and this water rises to a specific height depending upon the capillarity of the tube. It means, here we can see here, if this tube is broader, if its inner lumen is broader, so the water cannot rise to a, a greater height when it's Lumen is very narrow, so it can rise up to a greater height. So, according to this theory, these xylem vessels act as a capillary, and here there is upward movement of water uh, due to surface tension. Next comes objection to this theory. Uh, according to capillarity, plants are unable to raise the water to the top of the tree even in uh, in the trees of normal height the capillarity mein jo force hoti hai upward direction mein itni zyada nahi ho pati hai ki jo pani hai wo ek normal size ke tree mein bhi upward direction mein move kare and the atmosphere can support a column of water only up to a height of 34 feet while many trees have height of more than this practically water rises to a height of 100 cm in a vessel of diameter 0.03 mm and 150 cm in a vessel with a diameter of 0.02 this theory is not applicable to gymnosperms where vessels are absent. So, uh, jo gymnosperms are vessels, so this theory is applicable. Nahi hoti. Next, physical force theory is imbibition theory. This theory was uh, proposed by Ungarin in 1868 and was supported by Sachs in 1879. According to this theory, this water uh, according to this theory, water moves upward in the stem through the wall of xylem vessels due to imbibition. The xylem vessel has a wall mein kuch hydrophilic colloids hote hain pani isme adhesion ki wajah se attract hota hai aur ye jo force hai imbibition ki upward direction mein help karti hai water ki movement according to this theory 
The next important physical force theory is transmission pull theory and cohesion tension theory. This is the most accepted uh, theory of ascent of sap and was uh, proposed by Dixon and Jolly in 1895, supported by Renner in 1915, Curtis and Clark 1951. This is widely accepted theory. Uh, it is also known as cohesion tension theory. According to this theory, uh, there are certain phenomena which are involved in the upward movement of a center of self. Firstly, transpiration pull or driving force. So mainly, the uh, this upward direction movement is due to the transpiration. It creates a transpiration pull or suction pressure in the mesophyll cells, which is transferred through the xylem vessel, and this uh, reaches to the roots of the tree and helps in upward movement of water. So a continuous loss of water takes place from the leaf surface due to transpiration. Because of it, there is a creation of this DPD, high DPD, that is called diffusion pressure deficit. It is, also, it is also known as suction pressure. And this suction pressure is responsible for upward movement of water. It leads to water deficit in the its cells. Thus, a pull is created that is known as transpiration pull in the uppermost xylem cell of the vessel. And this pull is responsible for the ascent of sap in plants. Or the age of pull had transpiration pull that is responsible for this upward movement of water. Next uh, phenomenon involves the cohesion force. Cohesion uh, is the force of attraction between the water molecules. So the water molecules remain together by a strong mutual force of attraction known as cohesion force. The mutual attraction is due to hydrogen bonds between the adjacent water molecules and the water column can bear a tension or pull of 100 atmosphere. So if any tension can be addressed the water column, this is the continuous column. Due to cohesion force, thus the transpiration pull develops in the uppermost xylem cells and is transmitted to the xylem of stems and then to the roots. Due to transpiration pull hair leaves may develop hotai, then it moves uh, in the downward direction through the stem and reaches the roots and this pull is responsible for this upward direction movement of ascent of sap. The next is continuous water column. So xylem vessels are connected with each other and the water is uh, water in them forms a continuous column. The water column does not break due to gravity and the force of transpiration provide a necessary pull for remaining continuous. The next is SC force. So this is a force of attraction uh, between the water molecules and the components which are present in the cell wall that is lignin and cellulose. So these are xylem or Get tracheids and vessels on key walls, many of the lignin or cellulose, and they are hydrophilic and have strong affinity for water. And this phenomenon is known as addition. Then there are some evidences that support this theory, which are firstly, the rate of water absorption is closely related to the rate of transpiration, and this is due to this transpiration pull. Next, osmotic potential in the transpiring leaf is approximately 20 atmosphere. And this is more than enough to raise the water even in the tall trees. So, there is osmotic potential that is very much which is favor the water moment of the water. That is approximately 20 atmosphere and this is responsible for this upward movement of water. The maximum cohesive tensile strength approved observed in the water column is approximately 10 to 20 atmospheres. Occasionally, water bubbles may enter into the tracheids and vessels and these are removed by wet walls. So the uh, walls of xylem, ves xylem vessel and tracheids are wet and these wet walls prevents this bubble formation. The tracheids present in tall gymnosperms are less prone to collapse under the tension. So the tracheids are small and size chota hota hai, and their walls are thick so the chances of collapse are less And in gymnosperms mein mainly this major role play karte hai, water, absorption, uh, water uh, transportation mein, because vessels are absent in case of Gymnosperms, vessels are present in angiosperms, that's why they are known as angiosperms. The next thing that is transpiration as necessary will. This uh, statement was given by Curtis. As we know that transpiration is very important for and it is also harmful for the plants. So transpiration is necessary will because it is inevitable process, means compulsory process, but harmful to the plants. Its harmful effects include wilting, serious desiccation, and often death of the plant. If there is transpiration, that leads to death of the plant. If there is shortage of water, mild water stress uh, results in reduced growth rate and reduction in yield. If the crop plants are more transpiration, the rate is more than the growth is less and the yield is more than the production. Hai, wo bhi kam hoti hai. Then, however, transpiration is also beneficial for the plants in several ways. Firstly, the mineral absorption hai, that occurs due to this transpiration. Then, turgidity is maintained by transpiration. Exchange of gases occurs due to transpiration. 
effect on growth and development then absorption of water exchange of gases so all these phenomena uh, are mainly related with the transpiration so that's why this transpiration is necessary but then this statement was given by curtis so this was all about for our today's discussion about theories of ascent of sap i hope you will get some idea from this presentation if you have any questions queries and any suggestions you can give it in comment section thanks for watching have a nice time